Hello everybody, I'm Zenith Rule, and welcome back to Diving Into DuckTales, where Cat McBerry, Doug McBerry, and myself put on disguises and pretend to be Scottish as we discuss pretend. each individual... Pretend! <laughs> <laughs> as we discuss each individual episode of the 2017 DuckTales series, and I don't know about you, but I mean, like, I'm I'm only a quarter Scottish, so... To be honest, it, it... I'm less than that, so even though I have a really Scottish last name. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure exactly what my percentage is. Well, I think you're full of haggis. Hmm. <laughs> well, I am, because I actually eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, before we get into today's episode, how's it going, Kat? Oh my god, this. This, 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 this. This is the episode I wanted. This is the episode I was waiting for. This is what the season should have started off with. This episode. I am so excited to be talking about this episode. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this episode in particular, um, it, it is pretty much like the the episode that... Not only should they have started the season off of, but, like, this is so far, like, one of my favorite Glomgold episodes. This episode, oh my god, um, how's it going, Doug? Oh boy, this, yes, I, I, let, let, let's just not even worry about me, I, I'm fine, how are you? Let, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> So, as you may have guessed, uh, gathered from our uh, brief introduction here, today is a Glomgold episode. Now, I've always said that Glomgold somehow manages to make everything better. Well, we, we not only have a Glomgold episode, no, 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 no. It, like, they, they managed to make this a plot-related Glomgold episode the origins of Glomgold. Hmm. Something that we have not seen in animation. And, oh my god, it is, like, amazing how they did it. They managed to combine, like, pretty much its origins from the comics and have it make sense in the context of the old show. Like, it's really amazing. <laughs> like, the, the entire thing makes so much sense, but I don't want to give it away just yet for for people who are just tuning in cat why don't you give us uh, a brief summary of the episode and then we'll we'll discuss all of the things glom gold hi so yeah this episode believe it or not actually takes place directly during the finale of last season right when uh, glom gold had his shadow stolen from him um uh, apparently as he was being thrown into the ocean uh, that somehow caused him to black out and get amnesia. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works, but hey, if it works for the movie Overboard, I guess it works here. Um, anyway, he's picked up by some fishermen, and he's pretty much gone for like four months. His company's taken over by somebody else. And one day, Webby and Louie are out fishing, and they happen to come across somebody who looks, sounds, and acts like Glomgold, but he claims to be someone named Duke Baloney. And yeah, this is one of those amnesia episodes, but it is far better than any amnesia episode I've ever seen. Like, oh my god. Because <laughs> it's Glomgold. <laughs> I mean, first of all, it's Glomgold. You can tell from the very start it's Glomgold. They don't even try to hide it because they show him waking up from his perspective, looking down and not recognizing himself. So we, we know from the beginning that this is Glomgold. So it's not about the mystery. It's about how they go about it. Because half the time uh, they're arguing about whether or not they should do something about Glomgold. Because he screwed his arch nemesis. But, you know, they, they, they think that he's either pulling a con. But if he isn't pulling a con, if he does have amnesia... Then they're just like, okay, well, should we, should we like leave him the way he is? And and a lot of the episode hinges on a question like, is Glomgold really changed? And, because he's a lot happier now, but it, it's 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 a nice introspective into 
um, how Glomgold operates, because you can clearly tell with his mannerisms that this is him, even though he has a different accent, and it all works out and is explained later on, but it's just a, a large part of the fun is seeing Glomgold pretending to be someone else, and I, I, I honestly have a lot of respect for the voice actor who did this, because he has to play Glom, he, he has to play Glomgold, who forgot himself, who's playing Duke Baloney, who, who, who has a Southern African accent, so he's Glomgold with amnesia pretending to be somebody else. Well, it's not that he's this... pretending to be somebody else. Like, we find out later on, he actually has defaulted to his original version. Like, Glomgold, like, prime, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we actually find out that, yeah, like, Glomgold apparently didn't come into existence until the 1980s, which is, like, bizarre when you think about it in this day and age. <laughs> mm-hmm. They, they, they do give us uh, a large amount of Glomgold origins. At some point during the episode, they showcase that the person who created Glomgold was Scrooge McDuck. And and I don't mean as in Scrooge is his father. No, that, that would just be silly, but... Um, That'd be weird. The, per <laughs> the person who ignited his hatred was Scrooge McDuck, because back in South Africa, years ago, on one of his many, many adventures, Scrooge happened upon a lowly shoe shiner, and um, he decided to impart the same wisdom that his father imparted upon him. He saw that this person had a lot of harebrained schemes, but a lot of drive to become a rich person. So what he did was he handed him a dime, even though the shoe shine was a dollar and more for spats. So he stiffed him, but he wanted to give him a lesson in um, uh, th the same vein as his father gave him in in. Uh, not just stinginess, but productivity and, and, and drive. And self-reliance. <laughs> and self-reliance as part of it, too. Um, but Duke Baloney, which is Flint Hart's actual name, <laughs> his, his real name is Duke Baloney, which is, oh my god, that, that's perfect. That is just <laughs> perfect. Um, in order to get revenge against Scrooge, for, uh, for, like, claiming, you know, he's the biggest billionaire in the world, and he only gives him a dime for a shoe shine. I mean, yeah, I, I can understand. Like, principles aside, I can understand why he'd be angry. He steals Scrooge's money clip, steals the money out of his wallet, and he uses that money to create a fake persona, Flintheart Glomgold, who is more Scottish and he to become the the biggest billionaire in the world and trump scrooge just for not paying him enough all of this all of the years of work of 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 flint heart glomgold trying to get back at scrooge was part of another elaborate scheme to impersonate somebody else well not well to create a, an alternate persona for himself to get back at scrooge for one small slight. Classic. I, I wouldn't gold. call that really a small slight. It's like he drastically underpaid him, and it's like he ultimately didn't pay him in the end. So yeah, I, I would not call that a slight. Uh, you know, slight. <laughs> yeah, honestly, if I were in his position, I'd be really pissed off too, because mm -hmm. it doesn't work the way with Glomgold, the way it did with Scrooge, because Scrooge grew up poor, he tried his best to, like, make some money on the side, and then he was he was given that dime by a ditch digger. Ditch diggers don't make that much money, so it's understandable that he would only have that much to spare for a shoe shine. Scrooge is rich beyond, you know, unimaginable standards, and, he could, and yet... He thinks that underpaying this kid, who's already shown that he's hardworking and already has plans for the future and everything, you know, th that he's giving him a lesson in self-reliance is like, dude, how fucking dare you? Like, seriously, mm. seriously, like, 
He can give him, like, a, a million dollars if he wanted to. Or even just a hundred or even a twenty. Something more, like, a little more than what he's asking. Just to, like, show him that, yeah, you did a good job. I'm going to pay you appropriately. And, heck, here's a little extra to get you started. No, he does the typical rich person thing where he's like, oh, well, I worked for my money, so you're going to have to work for your money, too. Even though that's what he's already doing. Like, Scourge pretty much mm. created his own enemy. Like, I just love how they basically have the same origin story, except whereas Scrooge was driven to, was inspired to make something more of himself, Glomgold, Glomgold was motivated to to basically show up the person who stiffed him and show that, <laughs> you know, he he can be a better billionaire in that sense. <laughs> so <laughs> Like, I mean... There are things that I do agree with. Like, I do agree that Scrooge is being a Scrooge. And throughout the episode, like, we see Scrooge and he's trying to give pennies um, as charity instead of instead of dimes for ducklings. Like, there's a, this whole charity that um, is founded from Glomgold's company that's supposedly dime for dump, uh, dimes for ducklings. And he keeps trying to talk them down. And I'm just like, wait, but is it, it's not even your money. So... Um, well, you like, know, Scrooge is notoriously cheap. Yeah. I mean, yes. uh, like, n ignoring even, like, the original DuckTales series is, like, when, uh, you know, that, that the episode where uh, they go to rescue Beakley, he's, like, saying, you know, a, that he wants, uh, you know, the tea bags reused. <laughs> he's, like... He, so I would buy, you know, that he was just being himself in that he was underpaying, uh, you know, Duke. But yeah, no, it's it's a combination of both. Yeah, it's 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 a typical rich yeah. person cop out, you know, where they think they're doing someone a favor by putting in the same circumstances they were growing up, and it doesn't work. And that's not how you're supposed to do it. Like, you you should be, you know. There's like two mentalities. There's oh, I went through this, so some, so the other people should, or I went through this, so I'm gonna make sure nobody else does. Scrooge is of the first mentality, thinking that it's gonna work the same way. No, that doesn't work that way. Espe especially because they have different circumstances, and South Africa is not a very like it. I mean, it it's probably poorer than where Scrooge grew up. Uh, it depends on the time period. But, I mean, the point is, like, this was years later. A dime was worth nowhere near as much as it was back then, especially an American dime. And, yeah, like I said, the fact that he didn't even pay him the basic, you know, charge for the shoe shine itself. Because, like, you pay it, and then you tip. That's how it works. He did neither. So he totally screwed him. Like, as someone who's worked in the service industry, yeah, I would be fucking livid if, if, that, if he did that to me. Yeah, I, I, I would be pissed off, and, and he he is in the wrong in that regard, and yeah, he wants to teach him a lesson, but in the in the, in the the wrong way. Um, although, young Duke Baloney shows some of his harebrained schemes to get rich, and he, it's it's all classic Glomgold. I'm like, <laughs> he's just like, first I stomp the coal with my feet to turn them into diamonds. W wouldn't that hurt your feet? Oh, I'm too stubborn to admit when I'm hurt. And then <laughs> and, and then I'm going to take the diamonds, and then I'm going to use them to, to drill for gold. And and Scrooge is just like, but wait a second, why don't you just cash in the diamond? But what do I, but what do I need the drill for? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it it's very clear that Glomgold, even at a young age, had a very um, one-track mind, and... and he had he has point A and he has point B, but he 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 somehow doesn't know how to connect those two together. So he always goes to point C first. It, it's it, it's it's just it's ridiculous. And then we also see later on through the episode like exactly where his funds were going. A large part of his billionaire fortune was for like harebrained schemes, <laughs> and he has he spent a lot of money on sharks. <laughs> Hey, he's got a great shark guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it's it, it's so interesting to me, 
someone who um, never really watched too, too much of the series, but knows Glomgold um, as one of the prominent villains, as someone who, um, like, I, I love Glomgold to death. It's so interesting to me to, to, to find out that, A, he's not really Scottish. Which I kind of suspected from the beginning. <laughs> You know, when he's able to remove his beard. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's all been a disguise from the very beginning. Like, this whole persona is a disguise. I love it. Because it's so perfectly Glomgold to have this entire scheme to, to use his money, uh, Scrooge's money, to get uh, a bigger fortune and get back at Scrooge. And, and instead of just saying, you know what? I have Scrooge's money. I have all his fortunes. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it to make myself happy. Hey, use what you got. <laughs> I mean, it obviously <laughs> worked for him. <laughs> it, it did, it did, and now now he is the least Scottish person in the world. Even though on his visa, like they they started looking up stuff about Glomgold, he doesn't have any records, and his visa says most Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I can't believe they printed that at customs. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were probably handed a good amount of money. Well, the, fun the other way. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, like, the thing that I love again, going back to how they combine the comic with the with the original series, is that in the comics, it's like they said Glomgold actually legit did hail from South America. He had, had his parents were, uh, I think, Dutch immigrants that came over to South America, and he did meet Scrooge while he was prospecting for gold there. Although their meeting was a lot more, you know, not, not, not as like uh, sympathetic as it was shown here down in the comics. He actually steals from Scrooge. So, you know, he cements himself as a bad guy from the very beginning. Um, mm. And mostly in the comics, his base was actually in South Africa. So whenever Scrooge like had to go there, he usually had to, compete with Glomgold because 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 the thing is like Scrooge came upon like a diamond mine and Glomgold managed to pilfer from it and made himself rich as a result so you know he's again showing you know the type of millionaire he is you know stealing from people just to get by um however for the uh the original DuckTale series they made it so that he was actually legit Scottish and the reason was because at the time America and South Africa had really bad like it was a very tense situation to put it mildly you know look up the history if you're curious but basically they didn't want to start anything by adding in a south african character so they made it so that he was just legit scottish and was basically a clone of scrooge so this was a good way of like tying those two together and still making them the same person which i thought was really clever mm-hmm I, I just, uh, when I first saw that origin, uh, like, part of me was wondering if this was actually real, because a large part of the episode is them kind of putting in your face, like, they, there's a question of whether or not he's faking the amnesia, or whether he's actually, like, does have amnesia, and um, there's a point in the episode where Scrooge visits him, and, like, he sees the money clip, and, well, no, Scrooge visits Glomgold, he talks to him, and he says, oh, he's better off as he is, um, but Glomgold is, is seen with a money clip, and, uh, like, he has this dream about everything, and he wakes up, and he starts to realize who he really is, and then we actually flash back to his origins, and part of me, um, Part of me was wondering if Duke Baloney was just a uh, 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 one of his many disguises. I was not expecting for his real name to be Duke Baloney. Um, I know that's actually really clever because a lot of times when you see like shows that do amnesia episodes, they'll usually you the character usually ends up like in an unfamiliar situation and is given like a new name by the strangers they meet and they kind of just don the persona and make it up as they go only to revert back to their normal selves once the amnesia is gone in this case he kind of reverts to his true self like you know he's basically duke baloney before he met scrooge you know had he grown up you know, not seeking revenge all the time and basically living as a normal fisherman, which, you know, is kind of, kind of like, I'm trying to think how to describe it. Like, 
it's kind of sad when you think about it to know that he could have potentially been happy had Scrooge not screwed him like he did. Although, 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 <laughs> we do have the the start of the Glomgold isms because he sees a McDuck boat and he starts these more and more harebrained schemes um, as Duke Baloney to try to be the best fishing boat in the bay better than the McDuck fishing boat and he he tries to like you know blow up the fish or like drain the ocean and get all the fish and like he he has a lot of really funny harebrained schemes but at the end of the day it's it's not clear on whether or not he would have been better off if like say it's not clear whether or not um his hatred of the McDuck boat is part of his repressed hatred from Scrooge that he doesn't remember, or if he was always going to be competitive and hate, you know, someone doing better than him, because, I mean, you could probably argue for either or. I My interpretation of it is that, he is that yes, Duke Baloney is who he originally is, is, is like his default setting, but again, he became Flinhart Glomgold at, you know, almost immediately from that point onward. And he got so into the character, had built, you know, developed his own mannerisms for the character, even, like, talked like the character and everything, to the point where he literally became that character and nobody else. So I think that, you know, his new nature just got so ingrained into his core that even when he reverted back to who he originally was, the other personality was way more dominant, hence why it came out like it did. Mm. I mean, I, that does make sense. Yeah, because, I mean, when you're driven by revenge for that long and you go to such extremes, like, it's kind of hard to stop. So, mm. <laughs> so yeah, like, you even see it with, like, the whole dream sequence and everything. Like, you see him, like, see himself as a, as a young boy and... As it goes onward, he start. You see, like he slowly becomes Glomgold again. Everything from f finding a flint-shaped heart to being glommed in gold. So, yeah, that was like <laughs> really good metaphor, and I really applaud the. Uh, I, I really applaud the animators for that scene because, damn, was it good. <laughs> it was also very creepy. Um, mm -hmm. Doug, uh, what are your thoughts on all of this? Yeah, no, I I do kind of wonder if, you know, Glomgold would have, uh, or Duke Baloney would have, uh, you know, stayed the honest fisherman had he, you know, not run into uh, Webby and uh, Louie. Uh, but on the, at the same time, it's like, I, I feel like something would have triggered his memory anyway, regardless of whether they had showed up or not. It's just they happen to be that, you know they happen to show up which it, that's what i'm saying anything could have just happened like you know to to just trigger all those memories and you see that like he's still who he is you know you see him cursing a rope because he got caught in it <laughs> you see him like you know with his uh his schemes and plans to uh you know go to night school and then uh you know become best <laughs> fisherman <laughs> it's like, i mean hell when he first washes up in the uh the boat without his uh memory he's still talking in his scottish brogue yeah so it, well it well, it kind of reminds me, again, referring back to the movie I mentioned, uh, Overboard. You know, it's about a rich heiress that uh, falls overboard and she gets amnesia. And the thing, as they show at the beginning, is that even though she has no idea who she is, she still maintains her personality. So, I don't know if that's true for all amnesiacs. Like, I heard different things that, you know, they have a sense of who they are. They just don't remember a lot of, like, crucial things. So, I mean, it's possible. I mean, just because your memory gets erased doesn't mean your personality does. So, mm -hmm. who knows? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, like I said, I, I do feel like, given time, something probably would have triggered his memory and, you know... Well, to be he, honest, Louie Go Louis back. And, yeah, but, I mean, to be honest, Louie and Webby really didn't... weren't that crucial in him remembering. 
because the thing that really triggered his memories was the McDuck boat. Because mm-hmm. that, you know, again, the representation of Scrooge. Like, that was the thing that really set him off a lot. Like, Louie and Webby, like, were kind of just, you know, they were trying to, like, get him to remember, but nothing was clicking. And they really didn't play any part in him remembering up until they went out fishing during the storm. And he went off to try to find them and then got hit in the head again. And then he remembered. Because, you know, that's how it works. Apparently, you get hit in the head again and your memory (laughs) comes back. (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah. I mean... Like I said, it, it really could have been either or, but uh, yeah, I, I'm more inclined to think that something would have come along anyway, you know, obviously yeah. seeing the boat, you know, more and more probably would have uh, eventually, uh, you know, made him re- revert back to uh, Glomgold, but yeah, um, I, I, I mean, it's just... It's it's interesting, and especially like when we see you know his flashbacks and how uh, you know he just I'm like I I kind of question his uh, you know ambitiousness, his drive to do things because it's clear like he's failed in so many endeavors, yet he managed to you know get to the successful point where he was. I mean, granted, he had the money to do so, but it's like the mindset. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering because if he's, you know, so able to constantly like be, uh, you know, caught in his own traps to, you know, basically to, to wind up screwing himself over in so many cases. You have to wonder how he managed to succeed in getting to, you know, the point he did as Glomgold. That is a legit question. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming he did it through deceitful means like he always does. Like, you know, he he hires, like, the cheapest, like, employees and he, like, backstabs them when it's convenient and he steals shit that he needs and then, you know, hoards other stuff away and, you know, just basically plays dirty for the most part. Oh like, yeah, and was... in fact you were yeah, you were mentioning how like it it's kind of like his his path was, you know, divergent from Scrooge in completely the opposite way. And it's like, yeah, it's like while Scrooge is ridiculously cheap, Glomgold will, you know, selfishly spend money on, you know, any given thing and uh he'll still like go out of his way to get more money, you know, Either, you know, just for the sake of, you know, making Scrooge look bad or, you know, achieving, a, you know, a way to get better at Scrooge. I mean, for God's sake, in Jaws, you see that he's actually stealing, you know, the, the <laughs> money from the bin that had uh, been released. <laughs> it's like, you don't need this money. Oh, everybody else is already stealing it. So at this point, you're probably richer than him, than him as it is. <laughs> But th- but the thing you don't understand is, he has more money than me. I must have more. <laughs> um, it, like I just I love, love love how 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 his train of thought goes, especially when he's just a normal fisher, and he he's like you know he's the crabs start attacking him. He's like oh not again. And it's just like he gets hurt so many times, and yet he's still so happy. And then like he starts like unbreaking his fingers, and they're like, "Oh yeah, oh, he, god, he, that was disgusting." He's like resilient to so much pain. Honestly, I'm convinced he has like this condition called CIP. It's congenital insensitivity to, insensitivity to pain. It's like a rare disorder, but it basically like is a condition where you feel no pain, like no physical pain whatsoever. And as cool as that sounds, it's actually really deadly because it means you can have like get like internal bleeding or suffer a fever, and you'd have no idea. But apparently, Glomgold used it to his advantage because, <laughs> like, I think he, I think he even trumps Donald in terms of how often he gets hurt and how often he bounces back from it. Because Donald at least acknowledges when he feels pain. Glomgold doesn't seem to, you know, feel it whatsoever, which, you know, leads to my theory that he does have like a legit medical disorder. <laughs> I mean, they even state in, like, in one part of the episode that, like, brain damage is just, like, it is small potatoes compared to how many times he blows himself up on a daily basis. <laughs> True that. And we've, 
it, it, we've, we've seen this when like during the McMystery at McDuck McManor episode where he he has these harebrained schemes and he gets caught up in it himself. I just love like how he puts so much money into all those schemes and like <laughs> like I'm still wondering like how, how he got like the CEO job like I, I was kind of confused at first too like that you know after he was gone for four months they're like oh we're just gonna th- t- send his c- we're just gonna sell off his company to somebody else it's like wait can you do that well I guess if he's wasting money like he is I guess that the board just you know voted him out <laughs> I mean, if you're missing for that amount of time and nobody likes you, it's it's almost like what happened with Iron Man because the the board took away all his power. And while when they found him, like you know, he still didn't have any power over his company or anything like that. They tried to take over his wealth as well. I guess so. It's just weird because I figured like they'd have to either have him declared legally dead or mentally unfit or something, and then like they take it. I don't know the rules for that. It's just, you know, something that always came to mind because it's like, why did nobody think to do this in the first place? <laughs> well, he's clearly mentally unfit as it is to run his own company, and we've seen that. Like, they state throughout the episode, it's nice to have the company in the hands of someone who's not maniacally insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I love... I, I just Glomgold made this episode for me, and I knew from the moment that I heard that it was going to be Glomgold episode that I would like it. And then this did not disappoint in so many different ways. And he said it again. He said it again. It's like I'll always be Glomgold. I always will be. Exactly. Like I said, he is Flintheart Glomgold. It doesn't matter who he once was. That is who he is now. And he always will be! <laughs> <laughs> and I always will be. Now let's get Oh, he also sharks. said again, like, uh, in the flashback where uh, he's learning to, uh, you know, get the Scottish accent. is like, please pass the haggis. Don't tell me what to do! <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> I, I, I do have to commend them on the South African accent because even as the episode was ending... And he was slowly, like, merge, like getting back to the Glomgold persona. It wasn't until, like, the very last sentences where the South African accent slipped away. And they they did a good job with the voice acting in this episode, I gotta say. Oh, yeah. Let, yeah, was it um, Keith Ferguson? He's amazing. Like, he has such a long list of, like, voices he does. And... But I think this Glomgold is his best. I mean, I granted I haven't heard all of the voices he does. He could easily have a better like character, but he just knocks it out of the park in this episode. I was like, kudos, man, kudos. <laughs> I find it funny because in, in uh, talking about Keith Ferguson, I did not realize that he was the same guy who played uh, Blue Regard Q Kazoo in uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. He sounds nothing like the you know glom gold no he and doesn't <laughs> no mm-hmm. and in fact i also you know it, it's also a testament because um what you call it? back when i was in college i think this game uh lost odyssey came out that keith ferguson was in and uh you know a friend who had the game he was playing it and he pointed out that you know it was uh keith ferguson that it was uh blue from foster's home and i'm like Again, no idea. Completely different voice. That is so how damn good he is. <laughs> that is a testament to him that he can, you know, be that un- unrecognizable. That that is what we call in the business as voice acting black magic, <laughs> which I cannot replicate because I'm I still have a bit of a a cold. But um, you know that that's that's how it is. Like some people are so good at, at manipulating their voice. That they just, you know, completely become someone different in every single role. And that's so hard, especially if you have, like, a deep or distinct voice. Like, that that's just, it's not easy. So I, I gotta give them a lot of props for this episode. I, if I ever meet him one day, I'm making him say that line and I'm recording it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because, like, I don't care if I have to pay him. I will just to, like, get that. <laughs> I'll make it my, my uh, ringtone. <laughs> it's like, you are talking to... You you have found the voicemail mess... Uh, you have found the voicemail a messaging box of Lindhard Glamgold. It always will be my messaging box. It always will be. Curse you, MacBerry! <laughs> Curse you, Rope. Oh, I want to mention, too, like, I don't know if this was intentional, but I feel like it was. They actually, that Glomgold had a Christopher Walken moment. Because cause there was a part where, like, he's trying to, you know, outdo Scrooge's boat, and he messes up, and as he, it's passing by, he says, This is not over, boat. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think back to the Country Bears movie where Chris Rock was like, this, this is not over! Ooh, Bears! Bears. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how about when he tried to use dynamite to lure the fish? And he lo- lowers it down um, and it's disguised as a person. And it's like, a, like a, a apparently like a girl fish. <laughs> and then he's just like, no, 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 this is stupid. And then he lowers down another one dressed as a guy fish, and he's like, yes, now I can catch twice the fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then there's, like, uh, another part is, like, uh, uh, where, like, he, the part of the one where he, he wants to drain, like, find a plug at the bottom of the ocean to drain the ocean to get the fish. And he's like, but then there'll be no, uh, then there'll be nobody, there are no fish for the rest of them. Like, the, they'll go extinct. He's like, then there'll be more fish for me. Ah, and he starts like, maniacally laughing. Like, <laughs> he has some of the best moments of this show. <laughs> he is currently my second favorite villain next to Magicka. Like, my favorite bumbling villain, but, you know, Magicka trumps him if only because uh, she's Magicka. But mm-hmm. still, like, Dear God, this episode, uh, he I, has I, not had a bad episode. No, he hasn't, honestly. I'm surprised, because usually, like, I can't I can't stand half the Glomgold episodes in, like, the old DuckTales, because, like, like Doug said, he's a, he was a boring villain in the original one. He's basically just Scrooge, just, you know, with the ten, tendency for murder. So, I just love how they reimagined him in this, like... <laughs> He's like Glomgold if he were the monarch. <laughs> 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 and was it uh <laughs> Yeah, I the monarch am going to take down Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Now I need to see this. <laughs> the monarch I want, I want to see somebody arching like... Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> can, can you imagine if if the monarch and Scrooge McDuck, uh, uh, not uh, it, McDuck. <laughs> can, can you imagine if the monarch and Glomgold worked together to take down Scrooge? Oh God. I honestly want to see fan art now of, like, Scrooge and Glomgold dressed as, like, Dr. Venture in the monarch. Because <laughs> that'd be amazing. Fan artist out there, do it. I command it. <laughs> Make it happen, please. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this episode, like, I knew this was going to be special when people started talking about it. But, um, damn, um, this is... This is the true, like, first highlight of season two. The first episode wasn't too bad, but it was it was a pretty much filler episode. Last one was pretty lackluster. This one, it just, oh my god, firing on all cylinders. It's, it's, it gives us plot, it gives us character origins, it gives us lots of humor, it, give, it gives us glam gold. Like, what more can you want? Glomgold at his Glomgoldiest. <laughs> With all of his Glomgold glory. At can, his I, can, I say, I just, can I say this one part I really liked uh, while he was describing his plan to the fishermen about how to steal fish from uh, Scrooge's boat? And then Webby and Louie are on the side, and like, Webby's convinced that he's trying to be good while Louie's convinced that he's still evil. And he's like, He's like, this is Glomgold. He's probably diverse. He's probably like devising a plan right now to send us into a volcano full of like sharks with bombs strapped to them. And sure enough, he gets the part of his plan. He's like, and then we have these sharks with bombs. And Louis's like, what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what, what if we use sharks with freaking laser beams on their freaking heads? Nah, bombs are more powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't you don't want to completely kill off the sharks. You gotta you gotta sa save those sharks for later. Yeah, yeah you gotta true. save them for El Macho and uh, Despicable Me too. He, <laughs> he to, you know, die in the most uh, you know macho, macho way. way possible. <laughs> We're riding a missile with sharks trapped on it into an active volcano. Like that that sounds like a glom gold scheme right there. That's how he's gonna go out. Best death ever. Confirmed. <laughs> uh here's to you, Glom Gold. You died the way you lived with lots of sharks. And declaring revenge. <laughs> Although I'm really interested now to see what's going to happen in the next episode he comes back. Because they were actually setting up for, like, a sequel to this episode. Because at the end, Glomgold, you know, he regains his memory, he leaves the fishing docks, and he goes back to his company. And, you know, he faces Scrooge. And, of course, you know, he wants to, like, again, you know... You know take him down because Scrooge knew he had amnesia but he's just like eh, leave him alone he'll be good knowing full well the only reason he said that was so he can get a piece of his company and now he challenges him to like this wager saying that whoever wins will get both companies and the way he in the way he gets Scrooge to agree is he shows him the money clip he stole which Scrooge has a really strong reaction to and he actually agrees to it and we don't find out what exactly they're gonna do but that it's going to happen. And I am really excited for that episode. You know, I, I kind of wonder, like, what's going to happen with that. Especially because, while he does want a piece of the company, he he does genuinely think that Glomgold is much happier as a fisherman. And, I mean, I kind of have to agree. Like, aside from him reacting pretty negatively to the presence of McDuck... Uh, like, th there's some really, uh, you know, you can tell that Glomgold was actually happy then. He's not always angry, and uh, his back is not hunched over like it usually is. So, <laughs> it, it's like, you, you have to believe, like, okay, what if what if Scrooge is going to trick him into becoming a fisherman for life or something like that? I don't know, but um, I'm intrigued. I would believe he would, honestly. I mean, I do think, to a degree, he... Glomgold was happy as Duke, but again, it's that whole, you know, ignorance is bliss type thing. But ultimately, he couldn't overcome his nature. And that's really, you know, what cemented his whole change. So, but honestly, the thing I'm like really like intrigued by now is the mystery behind the, uh, the money clip. Because I'm convinced there's something that that has a significance of some sort. Because you saw the look on Scrooge's face when Glomgold held it up. He looked horrified. He's like, where did you get that? And he, like, is willing to whisk, risk his entire company to get it back. Like, I really mm. want to know the story behind that. So may, maybe it's something even more powerful than his number one dime? I... I don't, I don't know, like, there's, there's maybe something. Maybe powerful, or maybe it holds some significance or something. Like, I don't know, but either way, I have a feeling it's important. So, it's interesting to see where they're going to go from here, and if Scrooge is actually going to beat Glomgold. I mean, normally I'd say yes, but the circumstances being what they are now, I have a feeling that this might go in the other direction. Hmm, this, this is... Like I'm intrigued. I we probably won't have another Glom Gold episode for a while, but I'm interested to see where this goes. Um All right, Kat, what are your final thoughts? Oh, I love this episode. I absolutely freaking adore this episode. Like even when I was rewatching it, I was catching stuff I didn't catch the first time, and I probably will do it again once I rewatch it. But yeah, like Glomgold was on point in this. I loved his origin story. I love how they collaborated everything together. And I love how... I love the the uh, the animation in this. Like, the different angles, the colors and stuff. How they're representing him slowly finding his old self again. And, you know, just how everything builds up to the ultimate conclusion. It's just... Everything was great. And the humor was fantastic. And... Dear God, Keith Ferguson, I love you so much. You are a wonderful voice actor. Please don't ever stop. Like, I love this episode, and I wholeheartedly recommend it to anybody. 
All right, Master Doug, what do you think? God, I love this episode. It was so much fun, and yet it's, like, important, and it's, you know, it gives even more character to a character that I already freaking loved. And it's it's also, you know... I, I love all the uh, the callbacks to you know his you know other jokes and stuff, and the fact that they even threw in a callback during his uh, flashback with the uh, you know the from when you, uh, you you saw the original 1987 Ducktales opening and you see uh, Scrooge and Glomgold both climbing up that pillar to get the uh, the magic lamp, so it's like. Wow, you really, uh, you know, you did a really tasteful callback there. <laughs> uh, and then, and then, like the Ingmar Berman uh, style, uh, you know, dream sequence he has. <laughs> 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 oh my God, this episode was just so fun. And yes, watch it, watch it twice, watch it even more than that. <laughs> just, just watch it. <laughs> Demand it. <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly agree. This was hilarious. This was like it, it gave plot. It gave all this other stuff. Um, we have Glomgold with a squid covered beard. <laughs> like like his beard was turned black by squid ink. And it's like uh, and the, there's a point where he turns and he pulls out his like regular beard out of his back pocket. And the, the, the kids are just like, wait, that was there the whole time. <laughs> Uh, I just, there's so many great jokes here. There's a lot of good, good visual gags. There's some great slapstick. Um, it's Glomgold at his Glomgoldiest, and it's great, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Fantastic job. But, three, uh, with... Three thumbs up. <laughs> three, three thumbs up. Um, with that being said, I am Zedith Rule. I'm Cat MacBerry. I am Glom Gold! Glom Gold! Glom Gold! <laughs> I mean, Doug MacBerry. And uh, just remember if someone stiffs you, just steal their money and create an alternate persona, and you too can be a billionaire. Yeah, I'm not sure it works that way, but oh, whatever. Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't argue it. I need to pay off my student loans here. <laughs> <laughs> and next time, everybody, we get. We get to see a familiar trio. The three caballeros, the three caballeros. The three caballeros. Three caballeros. <laughs> and that's for next time. Take care. Hey, this is Magami33. Thank you for watching Zenith Will Review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome videos. If you like what you see, check out the Patreon page at patreon.com slash Zenith Will Review.